Hi everyone, I'm Benjamin and you're on Asia Advisors Network again. Today we are very privileged to have with us Teresa Go. Say hi. Do you remember the moments when you realized you were different? I don't think I really realized or knew that I was different, especially when I was very young. Because I think as kids, right, you don't really see differences that easily. Around other kids, you just play and um, have fun, you know. But I think as I grew older and as I became more self-aware, then I think that was when I realised that there were some things different about me, you know. Uh, I realised that I was using a wheelchair and then my other classmates weren't. So like small things like this, I, I did realise only as I grew older. It wasn't too bad because my parents always made me grow up being very independent. Uh, so I didn't have to depend on people, you know. Things like when we're at home, at home our switches are at my level, so that I don't have to ask my help when I want to turn on the lights, turn off the lights, something that is daily routine. You don't realise all these height differences until you're on the wheelchair. So like, I think my parents were very proactive in that sense, making sure that next time, you know, I won't feel too different, I won't feel like I need to depend on people, you know. Yeah, but I think I, I, I've been very lucky like, be very like just be surrounded by my family and friends who really don't make me feel like I'm different. So you said over the years I started realizing that you were different. How did you, how did you feel to, to grow up different? I didn't really feel too much about it. Maybe at a certain point it did get like not bad lah, but stronger feelings. Maybe I feel like a bit like a burden or like um, I'm troublesome sometimes when I feel like well they gotta make sure that the place that we go to is accessible or stuff like that you know then then there's always that like reframing and, and growing to learn that it's okay you know so I, I had to I actually sh shifted my mindset from don't call me disabled to realizing that being disabled is fine so then I, I embraced the disability and now if you want to describe me, I will not let you describe me without the word disability because it's part of me, you know. And it's not something I'm ashamed of because I've grown up with it, it's me, the person I am, you know, I'm independent, I'm happy, made my life so much better. And I think that was something that I had to learn like, as I grew up because as a kid you don't realize it, then you start realizing it, and then after you feel like you're a burden, and then after you realize, no, I'm not a burden. If they want to hang with me, they gotta realize it's part of me. So after that you become really uh, empowered by it. So there's different phases in my life. La. So now I'm like, this is the best position I can be. La. You know, I'm happy and healthy and independent and like, I feel like my life is really good. So what message would you have for, for anyone now or, or a kid who's, who's different? Uh, what, what message would you have for, for someone who's different? I think differences come in many Types, many uh, views. Like you can be different visually. You can be. You can look different. You can sound different. You can be different on the inside. You cannot see only right. Sure. <laughs> I feel like it's easier now in this current climate to be accepted for being different. Like I think this is a good time to talk about being different. I think then you kind of find out anyone else like you. And then you can kind of realize you're not alone because because there's bound to be at least one other person like you. And it's just up to you to kind of go and look for that person, you know. It's important to realise that all of us have our own values, all of us are valuable, all of us are, are important people, you know. And it's just to you know your own value, you know. Um, I think especially when I was a kid, you know, when I looked out in like, the media, um, newspapers or whatever, and I didn't see any other child or person on a wheelchair, it made me feel alone, you know. It made me feel like I was the only one. And which is why I think representation is so important, you know. Whenever we have uh, opportunity to put stuff out into the world, especially visuals or any kind of information, you know, you have the chance to show something off. I think that's a chance for you to show anything that's with you. Yeah, I think it will help anybody out there who feels a bit different and they see that and then like, they don't feel that alone anymore. Um, I think when I was reading up about, about you as well, um, I read a lot about um, your family support, your love for your family <coughs> and vice versa. So, how important do you think that is or what do you have to say about 
such wonderful my support. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, they are the best, lah. They are, they are truly the ones that have been there since the beginning. You know, I would not be the person I am today. I would not have all I have today without them. And it's really my parents, lah. You know, they've been my pillar of support, basically. You know. Uh, from the beginning, because I'm the first child, you know, and, and it's already hard having a kid, but you know, you add on the a little bit extra challenge of having a child with disability, a first child with disability, I think they had an extra challenge, but they took it and then they were very proactive in finding uh, information. At that time, no Google, right? So just yellow pages. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, and they, they were very proactive in searching for things that would ensure that I will grow up to be the best version of myself, you know, independent and healthy and happy. And those were the things that were important to them for me. And that was the things that they have to do, you know, in the past, it was like 1980s or 90s, like 90s, like early 90s. And they, that, like, they had, just had to be creative in certain ways because at that time, disability is just not a topic that many people talked about or knew about, you know. So, yeah, I mean, things, they always have my best interests at heart. Like, and my family is always there for me. What do you think is the best way for you to repay your, your, your parents? Or? Uh, give them money every month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most practical. Um. I, I give back when, however they they need me to. Lah, you know, um, I try to spend time with them. Um, it's hard because you, as you grow older, you realise just how little time there is in a day. There's, you just realise that you need to seize as much time as you can. Lah. So, I try to spend time with them, eat with them when I can. I, I give them money because I, I am earning a salary. Um, yeah, I mean in, in whatever ways that I can la, but most of most of all is to just be there. La. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I think time is very short, especially yeah. when you have a, a small <laughs> problem of representing Singapore. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. Which I will never be able to, to, uh, to understand or experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know, but um, yeah, I guess um, uh, it's true. Um, yeah, I have two boys now as well. Really? So yeah, I mean, there's never enough time to spend with loved yeah, ones. Uh. Yeah. yeah, I mean, t like life is so short, isn't it? And I feel like I have no time to be really afraid of anything. Mm. Cause if you're afraid of something, like then you don't do it, and then let's say you are, you don't know when your life is gonna end, and then if it like ends next week, and then you don't get to do the thing you want to do, and then that's regret, right? Mm. <laughs> so it's like there's no time to be afraid. There's no time to be uncertain, there's no time to say next time, you know, it's, it's always seizing now, now, now and it can be a good or bad problem <laughs> but it's, it's just making sure you enjoy life for what it is, la, you know, and, and not having regrets as much as possible. Yeah. And I'm sure you know, it's a very punishing schedule now, you are training for some meets that are coming so up. Tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's normal training, uh, we, I train every day except on Sundays. So there's, there's gym, there's swimming, there's physio, I mean other things that are mixed into making sure that training goes well. So we have psych appointments, we have nutrition appointments, uh, all the little things that, that you just have to fit in to make sure that you do well in training. Because you can, you can like just train hard right, but then if you don't take care of your body through physiotherapy, it breaks down, then you cannot train. You gotta make sure you take care of every part of your life mm. and uh, above everything else like for me especially like it's very important that i'm happy because i feel like i train best when i am happy like when i'm not worried or stressed out or angry or you know upset like i think the best place to be is content and like not even like super happy or what you know just content you can you, you're happy in training you don't worry about it and, and i think that's the best position to be for me lah.